What is going on guys? So today we're going to be going over a full breakdown on what gear you want to focus on upgrading first to get the maximum DPS increase. So what we'll do is look at all the equipment and we'll just start down the list. So the first one of course is a weapon. Now the weapon is pretty self-explanatory. What you're going to want to do is just really upgrade this as much as possible. Of course there are some really great stopping points. So for example what a lot of people do is they'll stop upgrading their weapon at like Raven 9 and focus on upgrading other gear just because this is a great stopping point because you get a lot of DPS. DPS increase at Raven 9 uh, compared to the other stages of Raven and it's just a great point to focus on other gear. Another stopping point a lot of people stop at is Ranzu 3. Everyone gets to Ranzu 3 nowadays and just kind of stops there for quite a while. Focus on upgrading their, you know, their necklaces, their accessories, everything like that, their soul. Next up is the necklace. So for any new player, they're going to be getting the Ulf necklace. And in its current version, it doesn't have any stages, so you don't have to worry about that. After that, later on in the game, you'll be running Vortex Temple Weekly Raid, and you'll be able to option your Vortex Temple necklace. Now, honestly, for me, I feel like at this point in the game, it's a great placeholder, but I don't really recommend upgrading it anymore. Now back in my day, there wasn't no Prophecy Necklace, so I actually upgraded mine before this even existed. Uh, but for any new player, I don't really recommend upgrading the Vortex Temple Necklace. Mainly because the Prophecy Necklace is actually better than the Vortex Temple Necklace in every way, and it's also cheaper in terms of at least raw materials. Uh, it would cost, you know, blue scales, which will take some time to option because you'll have to earn them from endgame dungeons like Dream Song Theater and Brew Chamber. But with looking at how expensive the Vortex Temple Necklace still is nowadays, I don't really feel like it's worth it anymore. You really should just be focusing on getting your Prophecy Necklace as soon as possible, especially because actually in Korea they have a new endgame raid, and they released another necklace that's very similar to Vortex Temple Necklace. It's like an updated version of it. It's a raid necklace. And the Prophecy Necklace is still better than that one on almost every single class in the game. So this is a great freaking necklace to get because it's going to serve you really well in the long term. So I don't even really recommend focusing on the Vortex Temple Necklace that much. You can upgrade it sure to stage 3 and just keep it there. Uh, but anything past that I can't really justify it anymore just because of how good the Prophecy Necklace is. Next up is your earring. So your earring from Black Tower you want to upgrade this as fast as possible. Ideally, you'd like to get to stage 10, but if you're a new player and you're struggling with the legendary jewels and everything like that, I've been there so I understand, uh, at least get to stage 6. This is a good placeholder and then eventually get to stage 10 when you can. Uh, just because at stage 10 it gives two different huge attack power modifiers, and then also gives different critical rate bonuses, so really helps out your damage a lot. And then the best thing about it is eventually for the long term, because you always want to play in the long term game in Blade and Soul, you can salvage it at stage 10, which you'll see here for a blue dragon. And what you can do for that is use it for your next upgrade. So let's say eventually you're doing Nightfall Sanctuary far down the line, you're doing the raid, and then your, uh, your Stinger accessory for my Lightning Earring drops. What I can do is use the Blue Dragon to upgrade it to make it cheaper. So without it, it'd be really expensive. With the Blue Dragon that I used to salvage from my Supernova Earring, it makes it way cheaper. So not only do you get the great attack power modifiers, crit rate, all that stuff, and it's a great placeholder, eventually you can salvage it and actually use it for the other higher tier stages of your equipment. So really great long-term future planning there, and you just want to upgrade this to stage 10 ASAP. Next up is Arene, so this one's pretty simple. Uh, keep it at stage 3 for quite a while, mainly because it really doesn't bring anything to the table in terms of attack power modifiers or any type of uh, critical damage bonuses or anything like that. All it really gives is a focus recovery bonus, and this is fine if you're, for example, something like a, a Wind Summoner, which really struggles with focus, but for every other class, you really don't ever have to worry about losing focus in combat. Uh, so this ring is not something you really want to waste a ton of gold and materials in to upgrade. So if you guys don't know, I'm actually in love with the bracelet in Blade and Soul. Uh, just such good DPS increase. It's definitely a top 3 priority item for upgrading. Uh, for a new player, you're either going to be going the Divine Dragon Bracelet or the Tiger Bracelet. It's just going to depend on your class build and element that you're going. Uh, of course, as I said, you know, you want to get this to stage 10. ASAP, as soon as possible, you get to stage 10. Next up is the belt, so unlike the bracelet, it's actually probably one of the lowest priority items you can upgrade. This item you can literally keep at stage 3 forever. Just keep it there, do not worry about it, do not touch it ever. Just keep it, whether you have the Horizon belt, Skybreaker belt, or even the Eternity belt, just keep it at stage 3. You never want to upgrade this until it's literally like the last item you need to upgrade. The belt is just one of those items you really don't have to upgrade anytime soon. You just keep it at stage 3, give some pretty good base stats. Uh, upgrade to stage 10 is just not worth it for the defensive stuff that it gives. 
for the materials and gold that you spent, you could have used it on upgrading your weapon or your bracelet or your earring or anything else that actually gives you some type of DPS increase. The next equipment we have is the gloves. So for the gloves, they're very similar to the same case as the belt kind of a low priority item to upgrade. Really for the King Gloves, as an example, if you max this out to stage 10, you're really only gonna be getting around a 5K DPS increase. And honestly, it's pretty expensive in terms of materials. It's gonna cost you hundreds of gold, tons of Moonstone Crystals, ton of Soulstone Crystals. So not really worth it. If we're talking about the new gloves, the Skyreach ones, these actually just came out with the February update, the Brew Chamber Dungeon. I have actually have a couple clan members, because they're super whale, uh, that actually got these gloves already. And they've been saying it's actually a really big improvement compared to the King Gloves. They're saying that they're beginning around like a 30k to 40k DPS increase. Like a really nice increase. So for gloves, that's pretty amazing. Uh, but honestly, for the majority of players, uh, not really too many people are going to have these new gloves so soon. So most people are going to be either getting the King Gloves or maybe the Starfire Gloves. And in these two cases, not really worth upgrading. I would just maybe if you're going to buy it, if you really want some gloves, because these aren't that hard to get anymore, just keep it at stage 3. Honestly, just leave it there for now, uh, because not really worth upgrading these. Now we're going to be talking about upgrading your soul. So, honestly, the soul is very similar to the weapon in the same case that you're just going to want to upgrade it as much as you can. Um, honestly, trying to upgrade your soul is probably one of the biggest grind of this game because you have to use sacred vials. And trying to get a lot of sacred vials isn't the easiest thing in the world. You can either buy sacred oils from the marketplace or spam the hell out of events. That's really the only options you have. Or transmute it, but I mean it's still going to cost you a lot of gold and materials. Honestly, as a new player, you should be shooting for at least Awakened Ascending Soul. This is kind of like the bare minimum tier you want to be at. Anything below this and you're just going to be really suffering in terms of DPS and everything. Uh, once you get Hot Moon Stage 10 and jump to Awakened Ascending Soul, you'll see a really huge DPS increase and actually feels really good. Uh, so whatever you have to do, honestly, if you have to farm the hell out of the current event going on or the next event, whatever you got to do, you need to do it and focus on getting your Awakened Ascending Soul because without this, it's going to be really hard to do anything in this game PvE related. The next equipment we'll be looking at is the Han Moon Heart. Now the nice thing about the heart is for the lower stages at least, it doesn't cost any type of bid ticket items to upgrade it. So you don't need any premium transformation stones, Empyrean Spirit Stones, you don't need no oils, you don't need anything like that for the lower stages, which is really nice because you can get it to a decent stage that gives you a nice DPS increase even as a new player. So honestly, the best place to aim for is that true Han Moon Heart. The reason why is not only do you get all the great effects, which gives you around 40k to 50k DPS increase, really awesome, because as I said earlier, it doesn't cost any bid to get items. It's going to cost you thousands of gold to buy from the marketplace, like multiple premium transformation stones, like how your earring would or your necklace would need. This doesn't need that, which is really awesome. Another reason why it's great to stop at True Han Moon is because after this stage, it's going to cost 3 sacred vials per upgrade for your heart. And the thing is the heart is not as good as a DPS increase compared to the soul. So there's really zero reason to be wasting 32 sacred vials to match out your heart unless your soul is already matched out itself. The last equipment item to look at is your pet. Now your pet is very similar to your belt where it gives mostly just defensive type stats like HP, defense, everything to kind of keep you alive in combat. Really the best place to at least get to is Han Moon Stage 6. Reason why is because you don't have to spend any type of pet pads to upgrade it, so you can get to stage 6 pretty easily. 260 soul stones is not that bad to get, uh, not even that many moonstone crystals. Once you're here, you get a lot of HP from the pet, you get bonus effects when you're hit in combat. Very awesome to stay at this stage for a while. Once you get past this stage, it starts to cost pet pads. Now pet pads are pretty hard to get. Uh, you can either really transmute them or buy them from the marketplace for like 80 gold apiece as pet pods. And that really starts to add up, especially as a new player and you're trying to struggle to upgrade other gear that actually gives you damage. Uh, so really, if you're a new player, just stay at this stage. Anyways, guys, that's the video. If you watched it all the way through, I definitely appreciate it. It's uh, you know, definitely a longer video than my other ones, but this is a lot of detail and stuff to go over. So I can't make it really any shorter than this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, always support the channel. I appreciate it if you do. Uh, keeps me going. Definitely going to have more videos coming out soon. So yeah, stay tuned, watch the videos, and I'll see you guys real soon. Thank you guys.